What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Miles. Today I want to talk about what it's like to train with George St. Pierre for a day. I had the opportunity to do this back in 2017. Now a lot of you might know him as GSP, one of the best to ever do it in the welterweight division. I mean he's got wins over BJ Penn twice in his prime, Matt Hughes twice in his prime. I mean he's arguably the best, one of the GOATs in the welterweight division. Now GSP has been in the news a lot lately because Ali, which is Habib Nagramagov's manager, has recently stated that they don't want anything to do with Conor McGregor, that Habib's going to stay retired, and he will only come out of unretirement to fight George St. Pierre. So this would be an awesome fight. I want to know what you guys think. Who do you think would win that fight? And do you think it's ever going to happen? because I want to see it. In this video, I'm going to give you guys a little perspective on what it was like to spar with George, what it was like to grapple with GSP, what we did after the training session, and some of the conversations that we had. I'm going to let you guys in on a little bit of that information. All I need from you is just to hit that thumbs up button, smash that subscribe button, so that way I can keep kicking awesome content to you and you'll be notified. Now, growing up as a kid, there was two mixed martial arts fighters that were really kind of like idols to me that helped shape my career. One of them in my early teens was Tito Ortiz, the Huntington Beach bad boy. I remember watching him beat Ken Shamrock back in the day at UFC 40, and I was hooked. The way he came down the ramp, the way he went in the cage, just mean mugging him, went out there and just beat him up. I was hooked. I wanted to start training, and I wanted to do what he was doing. Now, he was a little more charismatic in the younger days, a little more brash, but he was one of the best to do it. He ruled the UFC light heavyweight division with an iron fist. Now fast forward a couple of years, in my late teens and my early adulthood, this guy named George St. Pierre came on the map. He was from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He was a quieter guy, very humble, and a big mixed martial artist. Now what I really noticed about George St. Pierre, it was his ability to go on and take the best in the world head on in competition in the UFC. He didn't back down from any fight, and although he was fighting uphill at times when he was going up against guys like Carl Parisian when he first got in the UFC, a lot of hype behind him, George fought through that whole fight, fought, fought through a lot of adversity, and ended up coming out with a unanimous decision win. And after that, he went on a tear, knocking out guys like Jay Huron, and then eventually fighting for the title against Matt Hughes. Now what really stuck out to me about George St. Pierre was his ability to be good everywhere the fight went. I mean, he could be on the, the feet, jabbing you, kicking you, knocking you out. He could take you down whenever you thought you were gonna, he was going to strike with you, he would take you down. And outside of that, his ability to use his mind as a weapon, be a smart fighter, use that mind, and not only was he physically gifted, but his ability, and he said it best one time, he said in an interview, he said, the people who win wars are not the person with the, the, the strongest or the fastest, it's the people with the most advanced weapons, the smartest, right? A bow and arrow was replaced by a, a gun. And then eventually a gun was replaced by missiles. So he took that approach into mixed martial arts. He was always trying to evolve. He was always trying to gain a mental advantage, uh, emotional advantage, and just constantly seeking ways to out game plan, out maneuver, and out tactic his opponents. To top it all off, he was also a very respectable champion. What I mean by this is that when he won, he wasn't brash like you see nowadays. Guys like Conor McGregor, who, hey, I'm all for it. It's very entertaining. He's very confident, and that's just who he is. But with George, he would win, and he would always show the utmost respect. He spoke highly of his opponents. Even when guys like Nick Diaz were trashing him, guys that were trying to you know, bully him, he still stayed in his ground, showed respect, and was the person that he wanted to be and the energy that he wanted to put out there. So it's safe to say in 2017 when I got the opportunity to go train with George, outside of learning and growing on my craft, the little kid part of me was super excited because when I was young, he was a superstar to me. He was a big idol to me. Now early that year, I was offered a fight against Mike De La Torre at UFC in New York. So at this time, I was looking to kind of change up my training, and I had the opportunity to meet Faraz Sahabi, who, if you don't know, is the head trainer at TriStar Mixed Martial Arts, which is where George St. Pierre is from. Now, years ago when I met Faraz, he always had an open-door policy, and he invited me to come train down there with him. So at this time, it was just a great fit for me. 
I was kind of moving around gyms. I took a little bit of family time off, a little bit of personal time, and I was getting ready to get back into that octagon. So I thought, hey, what a better place to go to than somebody like Faras and TriStar. They're known for being tacticians, being great at jiu-jitsu, their wrestling, their ability to stick, move, to fight smart, and that's one of my favorite things to do. Instead of just being rock'em, sock'em robots, I like using intelligence. I, I like using all the weapons that you can do as a mixed martial artist. So going out to TriStar, it felt like a good fit for me. And on top of that, I get to train with George St. Pierre. I stayed in Montreal, Quebec at what is called the TriStar dorms, which if you're unfamiliar with that, it's basically dorm rooms that they set up at the gym. So I'm literally living at the gym, above the gym. I go downstairs and there's the mats, the ring, the cage. That's where all the training is. So if you want to be a fighter, man, this is one of the best opportunities to do it because you have everything at your fingertips right there. Now on sparring day, here comes George St. Pierre walking in. And if you wouldn't notice him, he, he kind of looks like just like a normal person. He's coming in, he says hi to everybody, goes, changes, and comes out. And what happens is we do a little bit of a warm up and we start getting some five minute sparring rounds, kickboxing. And I'm kind of, at this time I'm new, so I'm, I'm just looking around. And Faras, who is uh, a great coach, he ends up saying, hey George, grab Miles, Miles, go with George. And I was like, oh man, like, here we go. You know, get to spar with George St. Pierre. Now immediately what I noticed about George is he wasn't a bully. He wasn't one of those guys that's just gonna come out, try and kill you. He was gonna train to get better and he was gonna train at the level of intensity that I was putting out. So I immediately noticed that he was letting me work some stuff. He wasn't trying to just knock me out. He was looking for stuff, he was fading, he was working. And myself, I started getting a little bit more, my ego started getting bigger. So I was like, oh, I, wanna, I wanna see what I got against George St. Pierre. So I started picking it up. I started kind of throwing some, some good right hands, kind of trying to crack them a little bit. And I even got in on a nice double leg takedown, which I really wanted to finish because how cool would it have been for my own personal experience to be able to take George St. Pierre down, especially when we start striking because that's his best realm. But I didn't get the takedown. I got in on him. He sprawled. Yeah, he got back up. And I immediately noticed at that moment, that was probably where I messed up because then George started picking it up. He, uh, he started kind of sticking and moving. I couldn't hit him anymore. And he did catch me with a nice switch step left kick. This is the same kick that knocked out Matt Hughes. And wham, he hit me. I didn't see it coming. He did a nice feint. And I dropped my hand, kicked me there, blew up my lip a little bit. But I was okay. I survived the round. And it was an awesome experience to get to train with the GOAT, George St. Pierre. Next up was a grappling day. I got to do some jujitsu rounds with him. And just like everybody talks about, his physical feeling on top of you is very, very strong. I was on my back. I tried going for some submissions, but he didn't force anything. It, it was almost like he had a high fight IQ, a high jujitsu IQ, because he would almost wait. And then at the right moment, he would pop his hips and then you know pass the half guard, do a lot of high level stuff. So I was very impressed in that aspect that not only is he physically gifted, but he knows what he's doing on the ground. He's patient, he's looking for stuff, he's setting up traps. So that was another good, humbling experience to go with George St. Pierre. I felt like just the data I was getting by doing rounds with him on the feet and rounds on the ground was just good for my confidence and good for my subconscious. Because look, if I can hang in there and I can pull some stuff off on George St. Pierre, and heck, if I can take one of his best kicks and take some of his best submissions and still keep pushing forward through all that adversity, then when I get into the cage against this guy, Mike De La Torre, that I have coming up, I knew I was gonna shine. I knew I was gonna be okay. Which is exactly what happened because fast forward a couple of months when I ended up fighting Mike De La Torre, man, I took him down, I got the mount, I ground and pounded him, and I TKO'd him, man, vicious, elbows, strikes, and I got my seventh win inside the UFC. It was a long layoff for me, and I felt like it was one of the best moments of my life because a lot of things were telling me to kind of go a different path, but I chose to go back in there, get after it, put on, and it went so well. Now, one thing about that fight is I remember I had a chance to go back to TriStar immediately after that fight, and I seen George in the locker room, and he said to me, he goes, Miles, I seen your fight. Great fight, man. He goes, in his voice, he says, you look so focused. You went out there, you took him down, and you look like you were playing no games. You were so focused. And I was just like, all right. I was like, thank you, George. I, you know, I was just like, dude, that was, to have one of the best uh, to ever do it, somebody I looked up to, to, 
to kind of pat me on the back and give me credit for something that I did. I was very, very blessed for that. Make sure if you guys haven't already, just hit that thumbs up button. Drop your comment below. Let me know what you guys would do. Would you train with George St. Pierre? How do you think you would do against him? On one of these training session days, I had the opportunity to meet up with George at his own personal gym. He has his own studio with his own cage, a nice whirlpool, all kinds of weight equipment, mats that are matted so you can do grappling, cage work on, wall work. And it was just an opportunity for me and some of the guys that train at TriStar. We were invited over there to do that. And it was awesome. I mean, we went over some leg locks, some jujitsu stuff, and just being able to kind of be one-on-one -on -one with some high-level guys like George and some of the other athletes at TriStar, man, it was a great opportunity and I learned a ton. And on top of that, I mean, how cool is it to see a personal studio, to see George have his own training equipment, his own kind of hangout area to train, do what he wants, a whirlpool, showers, and it kind of made me think like, man, that's the way to do it. When you win the world title, you get a bunch of money to have your own training set aside. You can still go to the big gyms, train with your team, but you have your own personal training area, which was awesome. After that training session, we went out to dinner in Montreal, Quebec, and it was at a beautiful Greek restaurant. Everything was homemade, nothing was commercial. I mean, we had lamb chops, fresh mozzarella balls, um, I mean, all kinds of stuff. They brought out wine. It was just a beautiful, beautiful place. And I sat down with George and some of the other fighters, and we just kind of chopped it up. We talked a little bit about some of the fights that were coming up, our favorite fighters, that who was going to win, who we thought was going to do good. And we also talked a little bit about the business side of uh, mixed martial arts, which obviously at this channel, we love talking business, finance. So to me, that was enlightening to see kind of behind the scenes of George's opinions on some of the athletes, the, what the UFC does. And, you know, George really was in favor of the UFC fighters. You know, he really thought, as well as I do, that there's more out there for the fighters that, you know, whether it's financially, whether it's getting set up in your career, that the fighters deserve more of the cake. And that it is tough to see sometimes about how grimy it is as a fighter. Now look, we all sign up for this game. This is the game that we all choose. We know the rules when we get into it, but it's just part of being human. You know, you look at fighters and you want the best for them. They should be getting paid more money. They should be having better opportunities all around the board. And it was kind of cool to kick those thoughts off of somebody like George. And he kind of had similar thoughts about it. After we ate, George gave me a ride back to the gym. And I had the opportunity to sit and chat with him as we drove. And man, one thing that we talked about was seeing some of the fighters that hang around this sport too long, whether it's for money, whether it's for just the pure love for the game. And being past their prime and in a position where it's affecting their health. We talked about some specific fighters that we think are, you know, touched up, that have, you know, long-term damage. And I could really sense that George was not one of those guys. He was a guy that really was grateful for his life and took life serious and it was precious to him. And he wanted to get out of the game and he wanted to do it in a way that he took care of his body and he wanted to do it on his own terms, which was kind of cool to see because I agree. I, I do not see myself being around the game just to fight for money when I'm getting beat up or my health is, you know, taking a, a, a crap shoot. I want to get out of the game and I want to take care of my health. So when that time comes, I'll definitely be ready to get on out. And it was kind of cool to see somebody that thought about the game in a way that was very in introspectively, meaning it wasn't ego. They looked outside, fighting is this big and there's a lot more to life than just fighting. And health is a super, super important thing. Now I know we all get hit in the head and it's part of the game, but there's also times where you gotta train smart, you have to fight smart, and you have to put your health first. To sum up my experience with GSP, would be to say that coming from a kid who watched him on TV to somebody that actually does what he does inside the cage, fights for a living, and having the opportunity to, to meet one of my idols, to kick thoughts off of his thoughts, and kinda of come together and spend time and have an experience with him, Man, I'll always be forever grateful for it. George St. Pierre, to me, will always be one of the best to ever do it and an athlete that helped mold who I am today. So thank you, GSP. Guys, thank you for hanging around for this whole entire video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and drop an elbow on that subscribe button. As well, hit the link in the description for anybody that's interested in any one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. We have a couple left and they're filling up very quick. So 
If you want to chat about anything to help you from personal fitness to mixed martial arts to investing in real estate, I'm here for you. Hit that link in the description and I'll see you guys soon.